Hey guys, our guest speaker of the house, David Ralston, has just arrived. You have been in some pretty treacherous traffic, raining, monsoon type rain, and meetings. But we're so thankful that you got to be here with us today. Sure this is our Christmas special as we go off the air. We are celebrating the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. You have been such a huge part in the good things happening in the state of Georgia. There's your water. There you go. Um, you have been there working for us, working tirelessly, and seeing things really happen. We are a happening place right now. From Fannin County to the shores to the farmers, a lot of things happened when Hurricane Michael came through. Right. A lot of farmers are hurting, and I was so happy. These Some of the things in here are this year's pecan crops. We're very fortunate that this year's pecan crop even happened. Well, and in some places it didn't happen mm -hmm. uh, in southwest Georgia. Uh, <coughs> and, um, and, and, and it's really great to be with you today. And thank you for uh, uh, always making us feel good. Uh, Love and, you. And, and feel good about uh, where we live. Uh, we live in a great state. We do. Um, and, um, you know, I'm an incurable optimist. Um, I don't let negativity drag me down. Uh, I look for the positives, and we got so much to be thankful for uh, living in this state because mm -hmm. um, Georgia's got a little of everything. We have the mountains, as you said, up here that we're blessed to mm -hmm. uh, live in. We have uh, the the coast uh, with a with a seashore. Uh, we have uh, a, some <coughs> very fertile uh, farm country. Uh, we have uh, small towns, we have country living, we got large cities. Uh, I mean, we've got it all. Um, and we've had a good year. Um, but I think we'd be a little remiss if we didn't um, remember that there were people in Hurricane Michael uh, that were uh, completely devastated. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we lost 100% um, of the pecan or pecan. Mm -hmm. orchards in, uh, <coughs> oh, in, in Seminole County. We lost about 80 percent in Grady County. Uh, wow. And, um, you know, I had an occasion about two weeks uh, after the hurricane hit or a little less of flying over that area around Albany. Um, and uh, it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just absolutely heartbreaking. Um, and talking to the farmers these are farmers that didn't just start farming this year. These were farms that had been in families for generations. Exactly. Um, and um, <coughs> yeah, I didn't know much about, I eat pecans, but I didn't know much about the growing and harvesting, harvesting of them um, and found out that from the time you put a pecan tree in the ground until it's ready for harvest is 13 years. Wow which means that many of those farms will now be out of commission for 13, 13 years. years. That's a long time. That's a long time. How do, how do you do that? Well, yeah, I think you, you I mean, you, 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 you replant the trees, but then you're going to have to do something else in the meantime, obviously, another uh, farming activity. And um, it could What be. do they do with the fallen trees? Uh, they, Do they mill it for lumber? There, there was some of that. Uh, they had a huge amount of debris removal uh, and uh, they ground up a lot of it. Uh, you may remember about a month ago we actually had a special session of the General mm -hmm. Assembly. I remember that. Uh, to appropriate <coughs> some emergency funding to, to provide some Relief. And that had to happen. It Absolutely had to happen. Had to happen. It had to yeah. happen. Yeah. And I was so pleased we did that the week after a very, very heated election mm -hmm. campaign. Mm -hmm. But you would never have known it because we came together, we worked together, um, uh, we scraped every source of funds we could together, and we passed that emergency relief package with only one no vote. Wow. One no vote. That's pretty awesome. And uh, pretty I, awesome. I was I was very very uh, pleased with that. Um, made me feel good. Made me just proud to be a Georgian. Yeah. That 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 the leadership of the state had come together uh, to uh, uh, to provide that kind of help. 
for a part of the state that uh, was was hurting and and frankly is going to hurt for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, my my theme today was celebrating mm -hmm. Georgia, and I, I truly am celebrating living in Georgia. Growing up in Atlanta and leaving mm -hmm. the Morningside community, I fled as fast as I could to these mountains. <laughs> I just said I got to get up there. My mama was living in Tate; she was raised in Dawson County. We love these mountains. I used to love going back to the city. I have a hard time going back to the city because now we have theater in these mountains. We have great music in these mountains. We have wonderful jobs coming to these mountains. Things have changed. You don't have to go back to the city for so much. <clears throat> Our culture is changing. We have great shops to shop in. We used to have to drive back to Atlanta to shop. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do that anymore. We are blossoming. And From it was Cherokee an County, trip. yes, it was an all-day trip. Boy, you got that on Old Highway Five. Right. Now, 515, 575 has made such a drastic difference in why we're blossoming and growing and and doing what we're doing. People are commuting to Atlanta for work, but they're living up here. Correct. They've chosen the best mm -hmm. of both worlds. They can make the money they need to in Atlanta, but they can come home to the safety net that we offer the quiet living, the, the Tacoa River. I mean, is there anything any better, the Hiawassee no. River? It's just a fantastic place to call home. Good schools. <clears throat> fantastic um, schools. And, 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 and more shopping opportunities now. And um, uh, it's just, uh, uh, we, we, we really are blessed in this part of the state. And, and uh, seeing the growth and uh, has, has been amazing and you know, one of the things that we're uh, celebrating this holiday season, looking back on the year, is the uh, groundbreaking for the new campus of the University Absolutely. of North Georgia in Blue Ridge. Yes. Uh, which I think is going to transform the region um, by uh, putting a permanent brick and mortar uh, uh, college campus uh, here uh, in our area for the very first time. Uh, and. Uh, <coughs> I'm so excited about that, and I'm looking forward to uh, that opening in 2020. Um, uh, they, they have had such growth. The young people are excited. Every, I go somewhere every week and have a parent tell me, you know, uh, uh, that their child is now planning to go there, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. they're happy about that. The child's excited about that. They're going to get a great education. Uh, uh, without having to leave LJ or Blue Ridge or Blairsville or Hiawassee. And, um, so that's been a, a, a huge uh, development this year, and I'm very, very proud of it. And it's actually going to be able to house the students, isn't it? Uh, <coughs> Are you going to have dormitories? Not, a, not initially. Okay. Um, you know, I think that... Uh, There's uh, some cheap rent in Fannin County, I can tell you well, that. There, there is. You could do apartments and kids could share that. And I suspect that there will be some apartments. Uh, um, and uh, who knows, long down the road as it grows, uh, I'm sure that the, uh, the, the university will take a look at uh, uh, perhaps adding some uh, uh, on-campus housing. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Um, um, but it, you know, having the classroom space and the office space and the auditoriums and the labs and all of the things that that we're going to have there and and it's a beautiful piece of property. And I told them. And tell people again where the property is. Property is on 515. I passed by the other uh, day. It yeah. is on the north side, the north and west side of Highway 515 between uh, what we know as the Roses and Engel mm -hmm, Shopping mm -hmm. Center. And the river, it's just before you get to beautiful, the uh, Tico River uh, 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 on 515, just as you're leaving Blue Ridge headed out toward uh, the Union County side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if your child were going to college, you go visit the colleges mm -hmm. and you visit the towns that are in, you're always concerned with their safety because you're True. leaving your baby somewhere, you right. know. And, and to feel like your kid's going to school in Fannin County, oh my goodness. Well, that's true. And, and you know, we've had... Um, uh, we've got some campuses here in the state uh, uh, that we've had some incidents of violence uh -huh. on, uh, uh -huh. some assaults, uh, some robberies, uh, and I won't name the institutions because I know that I don't want to single no, them out. But no, no. It happens everywhere. It, it, it does happen everywhere. and <coughs> So people sort of wondered, uh, you know, back uh, a couple of years ago when we passed the uh, campus carry bill, uh -huh. 
you know, well, why are you doing this? I think why, that was so important. Why, because bad guys ought to have to figure out mm -hmm. who is protecting themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't worry about uh, firearms in the hands of good people. Right, right. Uh, and uh, so I think uh, that's going to, um, I think that's going to be a great benefit because, as you say, there are campuses that, uh, uh, that have some uh, safety issues. Yeah, frankly. you drop your child off and you worry, worry, mm -hmm. worry. Now, one of the things that I loved about this year, and I'm truly celebrating, <laughs> I have a new governor. His name is Brian Kemp. <laughs> I'm so excited. I was so traumatized that we might turn to a path that I didn't want to go down. I've never been a liberal. I've never been. I'm just really super conservative, Georgia, Southern, that's it. He is a progressive person with my values, mm -hmm. and I love that about him. I love that. He's looking to the future, but he's maintaining our values. Um, in fact, I had a meeting with the governor-elect last night, and I uh, was talking to some of his people today. We're getting ready. This will be the first uh, transition uh, from one governor to the next in eight years here uh -huh. in the state, and we're also transitioning lieutenant governors. So it's going to be a new uh, period there of, 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 of leadership uh, in, in that branch of the government. But um, I've known Brian Kemp for um, um, 20 years or a little better. Uh -huh. Down-to-earth guy, uh, uh, solid um, business background. Uh, but from a farming community, isn't he from? He's from Athens. Athens, and, Clark and, County farming yeah. communities. Yeah. And, and his background was um, um, being a builder. Mm -hmm. He was in the construction business, so he knows business. Um, I'm excited about his uh, the leadership he's going to provide to the state. Uh, um, you know, he and I agreed last night. We probably wouldn't agree on every single thing, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, we're going to try to work through uh, any differences that we have. At the end of the day, we're both conservative mm -hmm. people that want to bring jobs to Georgia and want to see Georgia continue on the path that Governor Deal has put us on over mm -hmm. the last eight years. And to be quite frank, I would have been happy keeping Deal for another 12. <laughs> if we well, could have, you know, I really I, liked him. But I, And I told him that uh, <laughs> a couple of nights ago, I was uh, at a holiday reception with he and the First Lady, and it was their last one. And um, It's said, tough to see him go. I, I said, you know, this it's is, tough. it, it is going to be tough. Yeah. He will go down, uh, in my opinion, as one of the greatest governors that we've had. Absolutely. Uh, a quiet, unassuming person, very strong though, mm -hmm. very smart, had a vision and stuck to it. Yeah. And his vision was that the best way, you know, when he became governor, it was right at, I'd been speaker for about a year, so we, we kind of came in kind of Got at the broken same in time. together. Uh, and it, it was a tough economic time. Mm -hmm. We had enough money. In I remember the, those times. Uh, in the in our rainy day fund, uh, to run this state two days. Wow. Two days. Wow. Um, and now we're up to having enough to run it for months, mm -hmm. because we have put back and put back and managed and saved, and been very um, frugal in our um, um, spending and. Um, uh, he's worked hard to make the state attractive for business. Uh, you know, we've been rated for six years in a row the number one state in the nation in which to do business. And deservedly so. Out of 50 I mean, states. Yeah, yeah, and we deserve it. And, and so uh, he has worked tirelessly to make sure that the, uh, the port at Savannah comes on, uh, is the harbors deepened and we can accommodate the larger uh, container ships that are coming in. We've done the the inland port network. We got one, you know, that's coming online uh, soon over in uh, Murray County. Uh -huh. uh, putting another one in Hall County. Have one now in uh, uh, Cordell, uh, and um, then one down in uh, Bainbridge. Um, and what that's going to do is is expedite uh, our well. First of all, it's going to take big trucks off the road. Uh -huh. Uh, which will make our highways safer, uh, and it will expedite getting products from all over the southeast, really, 
to the port so mm -hmm. they can be shipped overseas and we can make money. And, it's uh, like the apples here. We were talking about that before yeah. you got here. The apples in Gilmer County go everywhere. They do. They mm -hmm. go everywhere. Fannin County apples go everywhere. And the best way to ship them is, is obviously not just by trucking. Correct. Yep. So um, we've had a good run with Governor Deal, and I'm anticipating the same with Governor Kemp. Um, um, uh, the election's over. It's time we move on. Uh, I wish that people would uh, acknowledge that. You know, once upon a time, uh, it's in, done. In, in elections, it's done. It, I mean, it is done. And once upon a time, people were gracious enough to congratulate the winners mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. accept that they came in second mm -hmm. and um, you know we don't do so much of no. that anymore no. and and I've been disappointed that uh, with that change and we just kind of keep keep it going and we attack who wins and bitter losers uh, um, yeah. do not sit well with me yeah no, and and, and we we had one a couple of years ago and she's still pretty bitter you know and we just it's it's crazy I think, I think hers is incurable yes we need to get to the we need to just get together and whoever we are come together and let's work together to make sure. Georgia all that it can possibly be yeah. now for the next coming year what do you see happening from Fannin County to the seas do, are there big companies looking at Georgia again and you know I'm gonna say something oh, I hope I don't get slapped for this don't hit me Amazon did not come to Georgia by choice. I have a serious problem with giving Amazon all the deals we give them with the postal service, losing all the money the postal service loses because we hand out to Amazon, one of the biggest companies in the world. We didn't get Amazon. Okay, we'll get something else. I was okay with that. It would have provided jobs, but we'll get the right fit for Georgia. There's somebody else going to come in and look. We'll get the right fit. We will. Um, and, uh, you know, we made a, we made a, 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 a good run at Amazon. And, and, uh, and, and frankly, uh, Amazon's one of those that would have been a real, uh, real game changer in many ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would have, uh, we would have had people coming into the state from other states and, um, I mean, it would have been a, a massive uh, impact uh, on the state's economy. Um, so, but maybe getting uh, something a little smaller would mm -hmm. be okay. Maybe a few little smaller yeah. companies in so, different areas instead of hitting that one area so hard. So, so um, yeah, we, we have companies that are uh, that are looking at the at Georgia now and. Uh, the governor, there's not a week that goes by that we don't have an economic development announcement where he announces uh, more jobs coming to the state. And it, instead of 50,000, as Amazon would have brought, it may be 200 in this community. Uh -huh. It may be 1,000 in this community. Uh -huh. But th that's, those are good numbers. Sure, and, 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 sure. And, um, and kind of split it out among the state. Don't just put it in that area. Well, a lot of that's driven by obviously by the companies and 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 they know uh, they have their own criteria for where they need to be and where they need to locate and so uh, uh, much of that's driven not by the state telling them where mm -hmm. to go but right. by them Their saying choice. you know we need to be by an interstate highway or we need to be near a rail line or we need to be close to the airport or whatever it might be um, but um, yeah, in the coming year, we're going to continue um, uh, to focus on job growth here in the state. Um, uh, one of the things, and we talked about this the last time uh, I visited with you, is um, I am a great, great believer, and I'm very passionate about making sure that rural Georgia mm -hmm. has every opportunity mm -hmm. it possibly can. Um, I wanted to ask you about Columbus because that's an area we haven't hit on in the visits. What's Columbus? What's happening Columbus in Columbus? Columbus is doing real well. Um, Columbus has become uh, quite a financial center mm -hmm. uh, with of, of a number of banks are headquartered there, a number of uh, uh, data processing and right. financial processing centers uh, uh, are located there. And in addition, they have Fort Benning. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's what's it been a year or two ago that uh, um, they closed much of Fort Knox in Kentucky right. and mm -hmm. moved those people to uh, to Fort Benning, and 
So they have the fort, uh, and uh, so Columbus is doing, um, um, uh, it is probably one of the real success stories outside of Metro Atlanta in mm -hmm. the state. Mm -hmm. without, without and, and it's a nice area to live because number one, you can get to Florida quick if you want to go to the beach. Sure. You can get to Ufala, Alabama if you want to go in taking, you know, so so it's in a, it's in a good area. It's in a it good is, area. Um, and um, and uh, the, the leadership in the city's done a good job. And um, the, I don't know if you've been there in the last uh, two or three years, but uh, we have them on one thing. What? We have a real whitewater yes. Yes. river. Yes, yes. I they was involved, had, they had yes. to build a fake yes. whitewater river. Yes, I was involved <laughs> in part of that and doing some commercial aspects of that. Yes, and I know that. But. But whatever works, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's apparently working for them. But yep. when I'm down there, I, I look at it and I tell my friends in Columbus that you know, <laughs> not real. <laughs> you should come see the real one. Yeah. In the Okoe Gorge. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's talk about tourism because <clears throat> um, often I have Hilda Thomason from the Georgia Mountain Fair on, mm -hmm. and we talk about when people cross the Florida Georgia line, they see a sign that says Mercier Orchards mm -hmm. right there at the Florida Georgia Line. As they come up, they learn the Georgia Mountain Fair brings millions of dollars to Georgia every single year. People for 30, 35 years have come to visit North Georgia because of the Georgia Mountain Fair. There are a lot of reasons to come to Georgia. People have chosen us as their destination location. That's pretty cool. You know, Fannin County has got thousands of cabins that people rent on a weekly right. basis, sometimes on a monthly basis. They have chosen Georgia to visit. It's a tourist attraction. That's pretty awesome. It is, and 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 you mentioned Hilda, and I want to take give her a tip of the hat. Uh, um, Hilda is one of the uh, not only is just a great person and a very nice person. She does a tremendous job. She's amazing with uh, with that uh, fair and with their that property <coughs> up there, and can't say enough good things about her. Um, but um, yeah, tourism has been. Uh, uh, has been an amazing thing and, and you know living in Blue Ridge I get to see that all the time mm -hmm. what it has meant to that community and also to Ella J and, and, and all the area uh, people enjoy coming mm -hmm. and um, you know and that's that's good for business I mean uh, McKaysville you know, is beginning to thrive you, know, you can't you can't eat in a restaurant hardly uh, uh, because they're, they're packed uh, mm -hmm. The cabins stay full, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and um, so it, it, it really is, uh, tourism has really taken off, and again, we've got so much to offer. You know, you've got the, uh, the, the, the national forest, you've got the lake, you've got the creeks and rivers, uh, you've got uh, antiquing and, mm -hmm. and shopping downtown in Blue Ridge and LJ, and so there's just so much uh, to do. Uh, and then just do nothing if you want to. And and that's what I was about to say. To me, the greatest vacation would be rent a house on Lake Blue Ridge and just chill. Just call it chilling time because it's beautiful, it's quiet, it's safe. You know, you can order pizza, you can pick up your pizza, go to your house on the lake. It's fantastic. <coughs> it's fantastic. And so many people have chosen to build homes there. The tax base in Fannin County has certainly grown mm -hmm. because the average lake house is not two hundred eighty thousand dollars anymore. Right. The average lake house is a million plus. You know, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. So um, we are going to take a commercial break for just a second. We'll be back in just a minute, and I want you to give us about fifteen minutes of you winding down what you think we're going to do in the state of Georgia that we will see accomplished this year and things that we will try. Maybe we'll get it done, maybe we won't, but let's talk about that when we come okay. back in just a couple of minutes. Okay, all right, Speaker, will you please tell us what you see for 2019 being accomplished in Georgia? I hope that we can continue to uh, our efforts to revitalize rural Georgia mm -hmm. uh, through uh, bringing <coughs> <clears throat> uh, more high-speed broadband into every part of Georgia. And I, I, I hear from uh, people in our community here but that, that are uh, a little troubled by, uh, you know, the broadband speed. And uh, But I, I, I'm hoping that we will 
make huge strides this session on that. I'm hoping that uh, we're going to make some strides on uh, uh, increasing access to health care, quality health care mm -hmm. in rural Georgia for uh, our, our residents there. Um, uh, continue to work to improve education. You know, last year, for the very first year ever, we fully funded QBE, our, our funding formula for K through 12 education. <clears throat> and so um, um, uh, I think that's going to start paying uh, dividends uh, in terms of uh, student success. Uh, so um, uh, education is one area I'm hoping that we'll uh, see some great things in. Um, and job growth. I mean, as we were chatting about that a few minutes ago. I think we're going to have another great year mm -hmm. in job growth. I do too. Uh, and um, so I think those are three things that I'm uh, looking to see. Uh, uh, um, and, and uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about what's out there. I'm very excited about the uh, plans that Governor-elect Kemp has. And um, I'm looking forward to the session starting in January so we can implement some of these things. And uh, let's keep putting Georgia to work. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, um, uh, at, with, a, with a qualified, ready-to-go workforce, uh, uh, I think that's uh, a huge undertaking, uh, and um, so I mean, I'm excited. I, I really am. I, um, I know that uh, the governor and I chatted last night. I know that we're both committed to, uh, you know, cutting taxes uh, uh, early in his administration, and uh, uh, you know, we had a tax cut last session under Governor Deal. Um, so um, I, I, I look for some good things. I'm. Uh, I look for a whole lot of different things. I look for the Braves to finish the drill this year. And, Yay! Would you know, that be awesome? Get to the World Series. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. This was actually this was to be the year, not last yep. year, that they were to do that. Yeah. Uh, I look for my Bulldogs to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, some have some unfinished business with Alabama. I know. Uh, that, and, that's uh, one of those. So you know, I, I'm 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 uh, I'm always looking at. Uh, uh, at, at great things like that, and uh, uh, I think I think 2019 is going to be uh, a great year. I really, I, I I see it. I see hope in people's faces. As a realtor, mm -hmm. I'm seeing new construction, and you know when you start a house, it's just not you as the builder. You've got the carpenters, you've got the floor guys, you got the plumbers, you got the electricity. You've got uh, heat and air. You're putting together crews of people, not just one person. And I think we're seeing so much building now. And thank goodness Fannin County's got houses cropping up on every mountain. Well, you know, we've been talking about tourism and, 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 and the economy in Georgia, and we haven't even touched on the fact that early in 2019, we're going to have the single largest economic activity that occurs every year on the face of the earth come to Georgia, the Super Bowl. That's right, Atlanta. Get ready, y'all. <laughs> get ready, y'all. Great, great weekend to get mm, out of Atlanta. My goodness and, gracious, and, come and rent a cabin in Fannin County. Cabin and watch the game. <laughs> That's right. But, but the economic impact of, of that event, uh, and of course it stretches over a week or two, Yeah. Um, is is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, and uh, we'll we'll be hosting that. I think it's the first Sunday in February. Um, and uh, so that's going to be a, a, a huge economic uh, uh, plus for the state. Uh, it, it's going to it's going to be disruptive to uh, particularly to people in Atlanta uh, for a few days, but. Uh, um, it, it, it's going to be an amazing event. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm thinking about Atlanta and growing up there and how I loved it when it was cool, calm, and collected. My one place that I went all the time, and I'm going to really put you on the spot, Dawson County happens to have one of these. Do you like varsity chili dogs? Love them. I love them. I love, love them. them. We need to set up a date, and one day we'll meet over at Dawson County, and we'll we might show have. Over there. We'll do a show there. We might have two chili dogs, an order of rings, an order of fries, and I'll have a frosted orange, and you have a PC. So plain well, chocolate. Well, <laughs> even better, we can go to Blue Ridge to the Dairy Queen. 
Oh, I love the Dairy Queen and Blue Ridge. A chili dog with coleslaw. On yes, a slaw yes. And chili dog. Yes, yes, yep. And, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, Joe and his wife that own the Dairy Queen up there do a. F f They're fantastic. Job. Yep, yep. Great friends. Well, we're so blessed because being in these communities, we have the small mom and pop restaurants, we have the big factories, we have a lot going on. And I really do see hope in people's faces again. And I know mm -hmm. as you head into work in, in the year 2019, you're going to see a difference in how people are feeling because we're glad the election is over. We're feeling secure again. We're smiling again. Right. I mean, we really do see great things happening. Can't wait. You know, have no idea what Governor Kemp's first thing will be. But just to know that we're all headed forward and we're coming out of that, they called it a recession I called it a depression one of the things I wanted to talk to you about and we never have time for this is mental health care mm -hmm. is there funding for mental health care I think you're going to see that be a priority this session I think that um, that problem has become so pervasive in so many uh, uh, communities and homes and mm -hmm. it, it just impacts so many things and we've we've sort of looked the other way too long. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, I've had a couple of meetings just this week at the Capitol <clears throat> on trying to come up with a, a, uh, an answer to the question of how do we make that a serious priority mm -hmm. in Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, Very I, important. Very I, important. I've got one of my representatives uh, from North Georgia that's. Uh, working very, very diligently on the issue. And I, I think you're going to hear a lot of discussion mm -hmm. about that. Uh, I think the governor-elect is committed to making that a priority issue. I am mm -hmm. committed uh, to making it a priority issue. Mm -hmm. and, very uh, important. Uh, it is important. Very important. Well, we've got two minutes left, guys. And, and we could do this all day long. I'd love to keep you here forever, but I know you have things to do. But I'm going to ask you to please say happy birthday to Papa Jack Bryson, who is celebrating his 88th birthday on December 22nd. You knew his beautiful wife, Joyce, for many, mm. many years. So can you tell Papa Jack happy birthday? Well, happy birthday, Papa Jack. And uh, uh, you've got a great and wonderful family. Uh, uh, his son, David, is one of my They're the best. And dear friends. And uh, so uh, I envy you for getting to celebrate your birthday here at Christmas time. Yay, lots uh, of cookie, lots of good food. Uh, You've touched a lot of lives and uh, uh, and made a lot of lives uh, happier. Absolutely. And so uh, enjoy your day. Enjoy your day. We're going to be gone for a couple of weeks, guys. Be back on January the 7th. Um, I have to say Merry, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Please do something with somebody you love. Please reach out and touch somebody who doesn't have anybody around to give them a support system during the holidays. Please do not let anybody um, be so down and out and depressed. Um, we know that suicide is a great factor in many lives today. Please take care of somebody else who can't take care of themselves. When you give back, it comes back to you 10,000 times. You've seen that in your life and you know how important it is to give back. Right. So, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. And from the Speaker of the House, you got a Merry Christmas Merry for Christmas. him. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry, and Merry Christmas. Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Enjoy your time with your family, your loved ones. Please continue to celebrate Jesus. Um, he is the reason for the season. I'll see you again on January the 7th. Bye, everybody.